This is Tony Siva, co-author of Rethinking Energy. And I'm Dr. Adam Dorn, Tony's co-author and a research fellow at his independent think tank, Rethink X. For the past 10 years, a financial bubble in conventional energy assets has been gathering steam. Just like the credit rating agencies ignored actual market data in the buildup to the subprime mortgage crisis in 2008, mainstream energy analysts have ignored actual market data and have enabled the mispricing and overvaluation of conventional energy assets. It started with natural gas disrupting coal in the United States. Over the last decade, half of the U.S. coal fleet has been decommissioned, and the market capitalization of the coal industry has fallen by more than 99% from over 500 to just under 5, as measured by the Dow Jones U.S. Coal Index. And the index itself was quietly discontinued in September of 2020. Yet, despite this clear evidence of disruption and collapse, the U.S. Energy Information Administration has predicted a recovery for coal every single year for the past 10 years. Now, as with natural gas fracking, mainstream analysts have also ignored competition from solar, wind, and batteries year after year for the past two decades predicting that they will grow only slowly and linearly, despite clear evidence of sustained exponential growth. Today, solar and wind are the cheapest sources of energy, period. Not just that, the total cost of nearly firm power, that is, solar plus four hours of storage, is cheaper than the operating cost of conventional generation. Even if the conventional power plant itself were free, the fuel operating and maintenance costs are higher than the total costs of solar, wind, and battery. In our previous research, we showed that the costs of solar, wind, and batteries will fall by another 70% by 2030. So what natural gas did to coal in the 2010s, solar, wind, and batteries will do to all conventional energy technologies in the 2020s, coal, gas, nuclear, and hydropower alike. In our new report, we show that much of the mispricing and overvaluation of conventional power plants can be traced to a fundamental error in the calculation of levelized cost of electricity, or LCOE, a key metric that policymakers, regulators, utilities, and investors use to compare energy technologies. Virtually all widely cited sources of LCOE analysis assume that newly built coal, gas, nuclear, and hydro will be able to successfully sell the same amount of electricity year after year um, from now through 2040 and beyond. Market data show that this assumption is totally false. So let's first review the concept of LCOE and then dive into the mistakes of mainstream analysis and the multi-trillion dollar implications for society. LCOE averages the total costs that a new power plant will incur during its financial lifetime, divided by the total amount of electricity that the plant will generate and sell during that same period. This gives a cost per unit of energy, usually dollars per megawatt hour or per kilowatt hour, that regulators, investors, and other decision makers can use to compare different technology options. As you might imagine, the calculation is very sensitive to the amount of electricity you assume that the plant can generate and sell. If a plant produces and sells less electricity, then the cost per unit of electricity will be higher, especially because a large portion of the plant's costs are fixed, meaning that they stay the same regardless of plant output. No matter how much power plants produce, 
they have to pay for operating and maintenance costs and repayment of their initial capital investment, their mortgage. In standard LCOE calculations, the total amount of electricity is determined by the power plant's capacity factor or utilization rate. Imagine you own a commercial vehicle, say a taxi before Uber. If a taxi had the potential to drive 100,000 miles per year, then driving at 100,000 miles in the first year gives a capacity factor or utilization rate of 100% for that year. If it only drives 50,000 miles, then it would have a capacity factor of 50% for its first year. And if it only drives 10,000 miles, then it would have a capacity factor of 10% for that year. The less the taxi's capacity is utilized, the more each mile it drives costs. Similarly, if a one megawatt coal power plant ran at full capacity for every single hour of its first year, then it would sell 8,760 megawatt hours of electricity and have a capacity factor of 100% for that year. If the same plant only managed to sell half that much electricity, then its capacity factor would be 50% and so on. The less the plant's capacity is utilized, the more each megawatt hour of electricity would cost. Now remember, we're not just talking about owning and operating a power plant for one year. The financial lifetime of these assets is decades, 20, 30, 40 years. So to calculate LCOE, we have to add up all the electricity generated and sold over that entire lifetime. And again, the calculation is very sensitive to the capacity factor because that is what determines the quantity of electricity produced. And here we come to the crucial issue. Mainstream LCOE analyses assume that capacity factor and thus electricity generation and sales will start at an unrealistically high rate and then remain constant year after year after year for a power plant's entire 20, 30, 40 year long lifetime. But these are fundamental errors. First, capacity factor will not start at a higher rate than market reality. And second, capacity factor will not remain constant. It would be like telling investors and city planners that taxis were going to have a high and constant capacity factor for decades to come, even as new ride hailing technologies like Uber and Lyft are disrupting that market. Power plant capacity factor will at best match the market in its first year. And then it will decline as conventional power plants are outcompeted and disrupted by newer technologies. Because they overestimate capacity factor and therefore how many units of electricity these power plants will be able to sell in the future, all of these widely cited sources dramatically underestimate the LCOE of new coal, gas, nuclear, and hydroelectric power plants. Policymakers, regulators, asset managers, civic leaders, and other decision makers are then misled into making unviable investments in coal, gas, nuclear, and hydropower plants on these false pretenses. This dynamic is exacerbated in regions where utilities know that they can unload the financial risk onto captive ratepayers. Overvaluation and overinvestment based on inaccurate LCOE estimates is what helped create a financial bubble in conventional energy assets. Our new report shows how mainstream analyses have ignored the last decade of data staring us in the face. The average capacity factor for coal in the United States has declined from nearly 70% in 2010 to just 40% in 2020. The picture is even starker for the UK, where average coal capacity factor collapsed from nearly 60% in 2010 to 40% in 2020. 
to just under 10% in six years. Meanwhile, the EIA's LCOE calculations have always assumed that any newly built coal power plant will enjoy an unrealistically high capacity factor of 85% every single year from year one through 2040 and beyond. Yet, the EIA's own historical data clearly show that at no time in the last decade has coal's capacity factor been anywhere near 85%. They're not using their own capacity factor data in their LCOE calculations. And 85% is not remotely plausible looking into the decade of disruption ahead. Again, it's not just the EIA that's making this error. Almost every mainstream analyst is making the same mistake and posting similar LCOE figures as a result. So this is the view of coal from the mainstream LCOE perspective. And this is the reality of the last 10 years in the United States. And the decades ahead are much worse still. So what this shows is that the LCOE for coal was already being underestimated by 2010. The gap keeps widening every year, so that today, the majority of electricity generation in sales assumed in mainstream LCOE calculations is simply imaginary. Keep in mind also that this scenario is itself quite generous because we model coal to bottom out at 10% capacity factor rather than falling all the way down to zero, which would mean that LCOE would actually skyrocket to infinity. So what does reality look like? When we recalculate LCOE using actual market data and change nothing but capacity factor, we find that the value of coal looks completely different than what virtually all mainstream analysts would have you believe. By 2015, actual coal LCOE was already substantially higher than reported, with a corrected LCOE that was 50% higher than what the EAA published in that year. By 2020, the corrected LCOE, based on actual market data, was more than three times higher than the figure reported by the EIA. And looking ahead, as capacity factor continues to free fall, we find that the LCOE of coal rises accordingly, so that by 2030, the corrected LCOE is nine times higher than the EAA's current estimate. Nine times. This logic, of course, applies not just to coal, but to gas, nuclear, and hydropower plants as well. Knowing that capacity factor will decline dramatically in the 2020s and 2030s, the corrected LCOE for each of these technologies is already substantially higher today than the figures reported by all mainstream analysts. By 2020, corrected gas LCOE was 60% more expensive, nuclear 175% more expensive, and hydro was three times more expensive than mainstream analyst published figures. As we go forward, the gap between reality and fantasy widens into a gulf. By 2030, the corrected LCOE for gas is 4.5 times higher than the EIA's current estimate. Nuclear is 13.5 times higher, and hydro is nine times higher. And it's not just conventional power plants that are being mispriced. Investments in mines, wells, pipelines, refineries, ports, and other infrastructure throughout their value chain depend on assumptions about power plant demand, which of course depend on real, not imaginary, capacity factor. By overstating capacity factor at the plant level, mainstream analysts are enabling investments throughout the conventional energy value chain that would otherwise not be made when using realistic market-based data.
Conventional power plants will see their capacity factor drop even more dramatically as each megawatt hour of electricity they produce becomes more difficult to sell than the last as they face increased competition from solar, wind, and batteries. As in other disruptions throughout history, this naturally creates a feedback loop where shrinking demand reduces revenues, which forces incumbents to raise their prices, causing demand to shrink still further, again reducing revenues, forcing them to raise their prices even more, on and on in a death spiral. The organizations that have miscalculated the LCOE of coal, gas, nuclear, and hydroelectric power plants are playing a critical role in enabling the mispricing of and overinvestment in conventional energy assets that is analogous to the role that the credit rating agencies played in enabling the mispricing of subprime mortgage assets, which as we know, led to the housing bubble and the global financial crisis that followed in 2007. For comparison, the value of American subprime mortgages before the housing bubble collapsed was $1.3 trillion. Over the last decade, at least $2.2 trillion have been invested worldwide in conventional energy assets, and trillions more could follow in the 2020s on the same false assumptions of capacity factor based on imaginary sales unless we take immediate action to correct course. We recommend that policymakers, regulators, energy investors, civic leaders, ratepayer and taxpayer advocates demand that analysts calculate LCOE on the basis of actual market-based assumptions for capacity factor and dynamic realistic projections for all variables of their LCOE calculations that include the reality of the disruption ahead. Government regulators including public utility commissions that ostensibly approve power plant investments on behalf of the people should not enlist ratepayers or taxpayers to subsidize, insure, or provide a backstop for any new or existing investments in conventional energy assets, including power plants and their value chains. Demand that regulated utilities that push for new conventional power plants use their own shareholder equity capital. If a project is not good enough for shareholders, it is certainly not good enough for captive ratepayers or taxpayers. Protect ratepayers and taxpayers against regulated utilities who are trying to offload risk through ratepayer-backed debt or securitization. We have seen this movie before. Assume that every conventional power plant will be a peaker without the ability to charge peaking prices. The disruption of energy by solar, wind, and batteries is inevitable. The longer we wait, the more difficult it will be to diffuse the great stranding of the 2020s and avoid the worst impacts of this financial bubble. We need to protect people, not incumbent companies or industries. The time to act is now.